guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> my name is Dana. If you did not know, welcome to my channel. And today's video has been a long time coming, so I'm very excited to be sitting down to film this. I do hope that if you're not subscribed, you consider subscribing because I go through quite a bit to get to this point and to put this out into the world. So even if you don't want to subscribe, give it a big old like. That does help as well. And we'll get into the video. So title of the video is something about Naturium. I'm not sure what, but <laughs> this is a bag of Naturium. I don't want to know. I could add it up, but I'm not going to how much this cost. Luckily for me, Naturium is a more affordable brand, but I've spent a lot of money with them. And I am going to go through the best, the worst, and the mediocre <laughs> of Naturium. Now, the caveat, of course, is going to come in that I have not tried every single product of them. That's just, well, I'm sure somebody's done it, but it's not me. And I'm not gonna attempt to, maybe over time, but I was not gonna purchase everything just to try it. So these are the best, worst, and medi most mediocre, I gotta figure out something for that, that I've tried. That's the caveat. Nothing more, nothing less, that's just what it is. And we'll get into it and I will tell you about it. I don't have every single product anymore. I have a lot of them. I might have all of them. But if I don't have the product, I will just insert a picture of it here. I've talked about many of them before, either in a cleansing mom video or in something else. So if you do want my further thoughts, I will let you know and I will link any other videos that are attached or related <laughs> above. So let's get into it. I think we're just gonna start off with the best because I hate waiting until the end. So I hope maybe you guys are like that too. I'm gonna go through, and I didn't necessarily try to make each of these categories even. It kind of ended up that way. But yeah, let's start with the best. So like I said, I don't have every single one, but the one that I don't have to start off with is the Purple Ginseng Cleansing Balm. So this is a cleansing balm that I've reviewed before. It's in one of my um, empty videos. I will link it above, of course. And this one is a really, really wonderful cleansing balm. It does exactly what you want from a cleansing balm. No more, no less. It doesn't leave a film. I can't stand cleansing bombs that have like this extra film that then you have to take a, a towel and get off. This one emulsifies with water. It's nice and creamy. It's maybe not the creamiest and kind of most silky feeling, but it's perfectly creamy. It takes off everything that I need it to take off. It has a slight scent, but not overpowering. So I think some people with sensitive skin can use it. It's just a basic and great cleansing balm at a fraction of the price of some of the more expensive brands. So this one is definitely a big plus for me. And eventually when I get through some of my others, I would consider repurchasing. It's I think it's $20. So it's not the cheapest, but it's also not the most expensive. So the next one is the fermented Camellia Creamy Cleansing Oil. I actually really enjoyed this one. It's got a thicker consistency than a lot of other cleansing bombs, but it does come in a squeeze tube, which makes it practical to get out. I actually really like cleansing bombs that come in a squeeze tube, but I don't like them if they're too liquidy. And this one does not air on the side of too liquidy. It's actually a little too thick sometimes, but I like the fact that I can have it in my shower. I don't have to like worry about not getting my hands wet and I can just squeeze it out, put it on my face and it takes everything off. This one's also a little bit cheaper than the ginseng one. So if I were gonna repurchase, like kind of based off of all of the things, I would probably repurchase the Camellia, the cleansing oil instead. I also think that you get a little bit more, so it's just a better bang for your buck. But if you are someone who the texture is super important to you and you like that really creamy, silky texture, this is not it. It's definitely thicker. It's definitely gonna take a little bit more rubbing, but once you do rub it in, the warmth of your hands it's fine and it takes everything off. Okay, moving into a, a cream, a moisturizer. This is the Plant Ceramide Rich Moisture Cream. This one this has been used up for quite a while, but I saved it for you guys. This one is one of my, I would say like holier grails, not holiest, but holier. <laughs> it is in my Rich Moisturizing video, which I will link here. And it doesn't have the same properties as what I was trying to kind of accomplish with the dupe for the skin SkinCeuticals one, but it's a really, really solid cream that like, say you can't afford Sunday Riley, which is fair because they're $65. You can get this for $20, I believe. 
and it will do just as good of a job. It's also fragrance free, so anyone with sensitive skin shouldn't have to worry about this. It's in a glass bottle, which so is the Sunday Riley. Like there's so many benefits to this that it's like, I should just purchase this. Maybe I'm talking to myself at this point, but it's a lovely, lovely cream and I will definitely repurchase this. The next one we have is the Glycolic Acid Resurfacing Gel, 10%. So this one is an exfoli exfoliating gel with 10% glycolic acid and natural fruit acids. This one, they give you a lot. This is three fluid ounces or 88 milliliters. I feel like for things like this, typically when you see like good genes from Sunday Riley, those are a glycolic acid or lactic acid. They're usually like very small and very expensive. So this one is again, like you're gonna get a bang for your buck with all these Naturium ones, but this one is such a good deal. It does the most, but it also doesn't irritate my skin. Now, I don't have super sensitive skin, but I have had experiences where I've had acids just like burn my face or leave it irritated and itchy and dry. This one's never done that. It's enough that it's doing something, but it's not gonna overly irritate. Glycolic, I also find that this and lactic acid are kind of the like lower kind of um, level ones but you can also overdo it very easily. This one I've had for so long, I feel like it'll, I'll never get through it because I only use it once or twice a week, but heavily, heavily, heavily recommend. Okay, and the last one in my best, this one honestly could probably be in the mediocre, but I thought I would add it here just because I do appreciate the fact that there's such an affordable, high protection SPF out there these days. So this is the Duglo Moisturizer SPF. I did a whole video on this and so we'll link it here. This one is if you want glow, if you want moisture, if you have dry skin, this is for you. Everybody else use caution basically. This one, it did sting my eyes one time, but then every other time since then, it's never stung. I do think it's just really heartening, not disheartening, it's heartening to see a sunscreen at a lower price with a high SPF. I'm impressed the fact that they came out with an organic or chemical sunscreen and not mineral. There are just a few things that, you know, like for me, I don't necessarily need that much glow because I have more normal skin. So it's not the one that I reach for, but I can appreciate the fact of the matter and like what they came out with. So that's why I'm putting it in the best. Does it mean it's my favorite sunscreen of all time? Absolutely not. Um, you can go see the other video from all my thoughts, but I think it's just one of those things, I'm putting it in this category because I just want to applaud them for putting it out there at that price and making it so affordable and um, accessible, I guess, for everybody. So it's not necessarily that the product is the best, it's the idea if you get that, but it could also be in the mediocre category. Okay, we're moving into mediocre. Now, mediocre for me and this brand means I used it, I probably used it all up, I enjoyed it, but did I even remember buying it or purchasing it? Probably not. <laughs> so I feel like that's a good way to define mediocre in this case. And so this means they're not bad. If you, if one of these products is your absolute favorite, by all means keep using it, don't listen to me, whatever. But it's just not one that had a draw it didn't pull me back in it either was very nice but it didn't do much or i just didn't see any results so that's kind of my caveat for this category <laughs> so the first one is the pha topical acid 12 percent so pha polyhydroxic acid i honestly didn't have it on my list because i didn't remember buying it or using it and i feel like that is the best description for this category. It was probably very nice. I honestly don't remember. I know it had like a very light um, consistency. I mean, there's nothing in there, but it literally did nothing for my skin. And I know you can't necessarily like tell from using it for a month, but usually even if I can't see the difference immediately, there's something about it that pulls me back in that makes me want to repurchase. And this one, it just wasn't there. Now the other one is azelaic acid emulsion, 10%. Azelaic acid, I think, is probably just not for me. It's more for people that have really red skin or um, like redness prone, irritated skin. So this could just be that I bought it and it's not gonna do anything because I don't have those issues. I remember really enjoying the texture of it. It is a cream, it's an emulsion, but it just didn't do anything for me. So again, like I said, it's just probably not for me. If you've tried it and you enjoyed it, or it was something like that is more targeted to your skin, you have redness prone skin, I would say that it's a great bet. Obviously, Naturium, the prices are so low that it's easy to kind of try it and test it out. I didn't have any irritation, but probably just not the one for me or my skin type. 
Okay, we're just gonna keep on the like acid topical train. Um, this is the vegan lactic acid emulsion 5%. So vegan lactic acid is kind of the two that I use the most is like this glycolic acid and then the lactic acid. This one is supposed to be kind of, I, I don't know if I wanna say dupe for the Good Genes by Sunday Riley, but it's in that vein. And the reason it's in the mediocre category is because when I have both and I just ran out of the Good Genes, I reach for that one. I don't reach for this. This one, I feel like with the good jeans, I can feel feel something going on and it helps my skin. It helps just kind of clear it up overnight. Even not that I have super red skin, but it just leaves it better in the morning. Whereas I put this on and I feel like I just didn't put much on. Like it just isn't there. Am I gonna continue to use it? Absolutely. It's so affordable. You get 50 milliliters, 1.7 ounce. This is a very sturdy, glass package so it is nice it doesn't feel like it's cheap but it's just not doing all i need it to do so that's why it's in the mediocre category but i love to see this kind of formula and product at the affordable rate of natrium i shouldn't have waited this long in the video to say this but i'm going to say it now natrium is not for everybody i get comments on anytime i talk about natrium where people are like i would never use it and i well i appreciate you commenting and interacting with my video I don't know, like, is that necessary? Like, whatever reason you don't like the brand, just don't like it, but don't watch the video on it. It's like hate watching, like, and you're not saying it to me, so I'm not offended and I'm not offended that easily, but I just never understand it where people are like, I won't use that brand, I don't like that brand. It's like, cool, like, don't watch it. Why are you watching it if you hate it? So <laughs> if you don't like Naturium for whatever reason, if it's Susan Yara, if it's the brand, whatever, just don't watch, like, nobody's forcing you to and I don't know, just stop leaving those comments because it kind of irritates me. <laughs> okay, rant is over. <laughs> All right, now moving on to the next one in the mediocre category is the multi-peptide eye cream. So there is a YouTube, no, not YouTuber, Instagrammer who raves about this and the multi-peptide moisturizer. And because of this Instagrammer, I bought these products thinking like these are gonna cure <laughs> all my woes and they didn't. <laughs> So this one, I really, really wanted to like it. It's supposed to have this kind of peptide formula and complex that is revolutionary, that like it's just not been seen. I didn't find that it did anything. <laughs> like it moisturized, sure. And I even bought a second one thinking like, I gotta give it time. I gotta give it all of its credit and due or whatever. And it's just mediocre. Like I have nothing else to say about it other than that. I don't hate it at all. It does a fine job, but if you want something that really works, the First Aid Beauty Triple Hyaluronic Acid Retinol Eye Cream is much better. It's more expensive, of course, but this one's just a pass. Okay, quickly through these two because this video is gonna be an hour long. We have the Niacinamide Gel Cream, 5%, and the Marine Hyaluronic Water Cream. These are both water gel creams. I think I might have left a little of this one so you can see. Oh no, it's completely dried up. But they're both creams. So if you have more oily skin, if you have probably younger skin and you don't need a lot of moisture, both of these are just great and fine. But for my skin, I definitely need, even in the summertime, I need more moisture. I just like to have like glowy, dewy, moisturized skin. So while I think they're beautiful, and I actually think that the jars and the packaging is stunning on these, they're just not repurchases, but they do the job if that's what you're looking for. And the last one in the mediocre category is the retinaldehyde cream serum. I don't know why I had a hard time saying that. 0.05%. <laughs> the reason this is in the mediocre category, this is a newer product, so this is, I haven't used it all up, but this is one of those products that I can't really give my full thoughts on because you have to use a retinol or retinaldehyde or tretinoin, any of those pr types of products for a long time, like months and months, if not years. So I just can't tell you what it's doing for my skin because I don't, A, I don't use it that often. I also have tretinoin, which I use more often. And B, I'm not gonna know after a month or two. So it's in that category because of that. It does have this kind of interesting color to it though. I guess that's the color of tretinoin um, as well, or some tretinoin and some uh, vitamin A's, but it definitely has like a yellow kind of tinge to it. So sometimes when I do put it on, I'm like, kind of like don't love that about it but at the same time that's not like a deal breaker so 
Maybe I will let you know how this goes when I finally use it all up and if I can use it consistently, but right now it's just, I don't know. Okay guys, we made it to the juiciest category, the worst of the worst. <laughs> now, I had to categorize, you know, I had to say best, mediocre, worst. So it doesn't mean that like I couldn't use the product. It's just that I would never repurchase. I would not recommend it. Like I would recommend this water gel cream to people if that's what they're looking for. But if people are looking for a certain thing, I will not be recommending the products in this category for sure. So we'll start off with the one in my hand. This is the multi-peptide moisturizer. I already kind of mentioned this. It's not that it doesn't work, that it doesn't do its job, that it's not a moisturizer. It's all of those things. It's just really underwhelming. Also, the pump never worked for me, so I had to unscrew it and then kind of like get it out that way, which, you know, not the end of the world, but also a little annoying. This one was hyped up so much by that one influencer, and I guess I was expecting more. I should have known their skin type is kind of different than mine. It's fine. You know, it's cheap because it is an aquarium, but I would never repurchase it. I just think there's so many other better ones out there that I think this one was just overwhelming, underwhelming, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's talk about ones, we'll continue in the underwhelming versus like just terrible. This is the Hyaluronic Acid Essence 2%. I have not used up all of this, we're at about here, so only a quarter, because I find it so underwhelming. It feels like I'm putting water on my face. This is just not worth it. <laughs> there are lots of essences out there and a lot of them, in my opinion, are not worth it. And this one falls into that category. I don't have much more to say. It does kind of its job of giving you like a watery essence and I'm sure the hyaluronic acid is fine, but I would rather go to my serum that I make versus this. And again, just not it for me. Okay, another one. I have vacillated between liking this, not liking it, being okay with it. I've actually included it in a video that I had done previously with Tatcha dupes. So you can kind of see the progression of like how I felt about it over the, over the months, maybe years. <laughs> um, this is the fermented rice cleanser, enzyme cleanser. The reason that I feel like I have gone up and down with it is because there's so much of it. There's four ounces and I felt like I took, or it took forever to get through, which is actually a weird reason to feel that way. It does the job. It kind of acts as a rice cleanser, like the Tatcha one, but it's not as impressive as the Tatcha one. Over time, the scent actually started to drive me crazy. I think it, there's something about, well, of course I can't smell it in the bottle, but it just, the scent was not it for me. It wasn't overpowering, but it smelled like bad almost. It's one of those things that I would rather spend a few extra dollars for the Tatcha one than this one. In that video, I listed this as an option because it is an option, but for me, it was kind of like I forced myself to use it all up and I did not enjoy the final maybe third or half of the use. <laughs> now we're getting into the worst, the absolute worst. The first one, and I've talked about this before, this is the Nutrium Half Step Flash Facial. This is glycolic and lactic acid kind of in between step. So you are supposed to do your cleanse with your cleansing balm then this and then your last cleanser, which I find to be way too much cleansing. But even if I don't do all those steps, if I just do this on like after I've washed my face, this tears up my face like nothing else. And I don't have sensitive skin. This, if I use it, my whole nose and mouth area will be red, dry, itchy. I like, I can't put things on it. I'll have to put on um, Aquaphor just to kind of like soothe it and calm it down. It's so powerful and I don't usually say that, but this is just too much. So I don't know who will be able to use this. I also couldn't use it all up because I was like, I'm just gonna destroy my face. You gotta have skin made of steel to use it. I just don't know. I don't know why. Okay, and the last two, which are very, very sad, sad occurrences, are two that I have not used up at all. <laughs> the first one is the Marshmallow Root Barrier Balm. There's so much left in this and I will have to give it away or throw it away because I do not like it. This is supposed to be a barrier bomb and this there's a big kick where like brands were coming out with barrier bombs and I got this one again, it's an affordable brand, you know, whatever. When I tell you it dried out my skin, I have experienced another one that's dried out my skin as a moisturizer, like these two just did not work. Like. They're not in the category where like, oh yeah, that worked. I just don't want to repurchase for whatever reason. 
these dried out my skin. They, they've made it feel like kind of like dehydrated, which is such a crazy feeling after putting on what's supposed to be a cream, like thick moisturizer. I guess I didn't even mention this one. This is the intense overnight sleeping cream. Yeah, both of them just like, I've never experienced anything like it. Like I've tried so many creams. I've never ever experienced one that dries out my, my skin quite like these. And I've heard that from other people. I've heard a few people like the intense overnight cream, but I feel like for the most part, both of these just have had like this really weird kind of reputation going around. And I can confirm that that is true. And I dislike them very, very much. This one also has not been used. So um, I think I tried to use this one a little bit more, but to no avail. I think that's it guys. <laughs> I'm looking at the timer on my camera and it's 25 minutes. So hopefully we get this edited down a little bit so it's not that long. I will timestamp everything. I will timestamp the actual products and the categories because I know that is helpful for a video this long. And thank you for sticking it out with me. If you've been waiting for this video or if you're watching to the end, I really do appreciate that and I appreciate you guys watching. So give me a big old thumbs up. Give me a comment below to let me know you stayed to this long. I don't know, give me a cream, yeah, emoji. I feel like that's appropriate. And I will see you guys in my next one.